So here's the thing that nobody talks about. Well, first of all, this is me. I'm a broke college student, and I also have a dream of owning my own small business. But because I'm, you know, kind of broke, I don't have spare money to put into a small business right now. So I decided to explore the digital download world and create some of my own digital download products to get my Etsy shop going, get some extra money, and then hopefully be able to put that back into the shop to sell some physical products in the future. So in this video, I'm going to talk through my process of how I created my very first digital download product, which is up on my Etsy right now. For starters, I had to figure out what exactly I wanted to create for my very first digital product. Now, ever since I first had this dream of starting an Etsy shop, I have had a million ideas pass through my brain for both digital download products and physical ones, but I needed to figure out what niche I really wanted to hone in on for this first set of products. So I first just sat down and searched Etsy to see what's already out there, and I decided to go into the world of branding because I am pretty interested in this, and it's part of what I'm learning in my major in college, so I thought it would be a good place to start. So in my Etsy search, I came across some listings for color palettes, and I had seen stuff like this before, but I never really gave much thought to it until now. So I thought to myself, this is a pretty simple product to start out with. It's something I'm capable of, and it's something that's relevant to my interests, so I would enjoy doing it. So I decided to run with that. After making this decision, I looked at a couple more shops on Etsy that sell similar products to kind of get an idea of what the color palette market looks like right now. And then I went to work on my own products. I started out this process by jotting down my ideas while they were still fresh in a Google Doc. I listed the current idea for my digital download products, which is just color palettes alone. And then I went into listing some products I could potentially create in the future that would kind of build off of these color palettes. After brainstorming, it was time to get to designing, and of course, I knew that I wanted everything to look cohesive, so all my color palettes should be in the same template. So, I got started on designing this template. I designed the entire template in Photoshop, and I just used fonts that I use for my brand already, so that it would all look cohesive, so it wasn't too hard to make design decisions in that sense. So the very first template that I decided to create is the Etsy listing cover photo and every single color palette would follow this format. So I would have the name of the color palette and then 15 swatches from the palette so that the potential customer can get an idea of what kind of colors are in this palette so that when they buy it, they know what to expect. Now, this design process is all about trial and error. I tweaked this design quite a bit, so what you see at the very end of this time lapse is still not the finished design, but you will see the finished one later in this video. I also took some time to create a template of all 30 color swatches in the palette and their hex codes because this is included in your purchase when you buy the color palette, but I won't be showing that one because I don't want to give away my work for free. Obviously, I spent a lot of time making it and I want people to actually pay for it. Funny that I say that and now I'm about to show you my whole process of creating the color palette, but hey, honor system, right? Just be nice and don't rip off my product for free. Anyway, the next step in this process was to actually create the first color palette product. Now, I didn't really have a planned process going into this. I kind of just started picking out colors that I liked and thought went well together. And I would start with a darker shade and then just slowly and gradually move up to the lightest shade that I wanted. And I'm not sure what inspired this very first color palette. I don't know why I gravitated towards browns and greens. It might be the fact that my entire apartment has browns and beiges and greens in it, so that may have been the inspiration. And I decided right away that I wanted to name this one Tree Hugger. So once I got a bunch of colors, way more than 30, that I liked, I decided to go through them and be more picky, figure out what I liked with what and what didn't quite fit. So you'll see I'm starring some colors. Those are ones that I was like, yes, these are great. I for sure want these in my color palette. Other ones, I'm coming up with some new colors. Maybe I thought one was too bright or too dark or too orange. Or as you can see at the bottom, I decided that those were too blue. 
And finally, once I had all 30 colors and I liked how they went together, I put them all into a palette in Procreate. And then I gave myself a fresh canvas to swatch only the final 30 colors in the palette to make my life easier when creating the listing photos. Next, I needed to create the Etsy listing cover photo for the Tree Hugger color palette. And if you remember, I created a template for this already and the finished one is on screen right now so you can see that I tweaked it a bit more than you saw last. Creating this template ahead of time was perfect because it made it super easy to create the listing photo for the first color palette product. All I had to do was fill in the circles with 15 colors from the color palette I created that would accurately show a range of what's included when you purchase the full color palette. I also created a couple other images to include in the Etsy listing photos just to kind of show how the product works a little bit better and what's included when you purchase the product so there's no confusion for the customer. Also just to know, I rarely work in Canva, I always use Photoshop but I feel like every Etsy person uses Canva to create their listing photos so I decided to give it a try and it was actually really good, I highly recommend. And next, I know there's more. I created an instruction document with step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the product for people who may not know how when they're purchasing. And believe it or not, this was actually so much harder than it sounds and it took a really long time. I tweaked it a gazillion times because it's important to make sure that the instructions are clear. Otherwise, people might not even be able to figure out how to use your product and that's definitely not gonna lead to a good review. Also, like finding a balance between under and over explaining is difficult and you might think to yourself, oh, well, if they don't know how to do this, they could just Google it. But like, what if they don't, then they don't know how to do it at all. So then you're like, maybe I should explain this. I don't know. It's pretty tough. Next, I created the zip file, which just includes all the photos and documents that the customer will get when they purchase the product off Etsy, and that's super easy to do. And finally, it was time to create the Etsy listing, the very last step in creating an Etsy product. And guys, this step is no joke. This screen recording was almost 30 minutes, and that was just to create the listing alone. So for those who have never seen this process before, you first upload your Etsy listing photos, then you create a title, and I am no expert yet at SEO and all the like search optimization things, so I really don't know what to include in the title, but I always see Etsy listings with tons of sales have a really long wordy title, so I tried to do the same, maybe that's stupid, I don't know, but I figured the more words the better because it's more opportunities for people to search something in the title of my product and for it to come up. The hardest and most time consuming part of an Etsy listing is this description. It's always difficult to know how much detail to include, what to say. But the good thing is, it's kind of like the templates I made earlier. Once you write it up once, if you make variations of the same product, you don't really have to change it much after that. So again, I'm not a professional, I don't really know what you should include, but I started out by giving a brief description of the product and what it comes with, making it clear that there are only 15 colors pictured but 30 colors included when you purchase. It's also very important if this is applicable to your product to include what programs or softwares or whatever this product is compatible with because the last thing you want is someone purchasing it for something else, not realizing it's not gonna work, and now they're upset because that wasn't clear what it was for. So I made sure to clearly state that the swatches file is only compatible with Procreate, so you can only actually download and save the palette in Procreate, but there are ways to use it in other programs. And 
then I think you should always include something saying that they can always reach out if the instructions are unclear and they still have questions. Just make sure that they're not turned off by it if they're not fully sure how it works before they purchase and they're worried they won't understand it. And I think it's also totally valid to be like, hey, don't rip this off, especially with this color palette. It's pretty easy for people to kind of steal the colors without purchasing it. But I put a lot of time and effort into this product, so I think typing that out and just reminding people that this is my original work and that it's kind of, you know, rude to steal it is important and totally valid to include. And finally, I like to end my description with a little thank you for your support and enjoy the new product because it's very nice of people to buy from small businesses, so I want to make sure that I show my thanks. The next step is to add tags. These are like hashtags on Instagram or Twitter. It just helps people find your product better, and I really am not a master at this either. I don't really know what words you should include. I kind of just go with my gut and put what I think people would search for but I'm still kind of feeling it out and seeing what works. Next, of course, is setting the price. I just went with $3 because that seems to be what most people in this side of the market are doing, but honestly, I don't know. And finally, the last step is to upload the file that customers will receive and download when they make the purchase. So there you have it. This is my final Tree Hugger Color Palette Etsy listing. I hope you enjoyed following along and learning how I created this product and created the listing and everything that goes into this digital download product on Etsy. Also, since creating the Tree Hugger Color Palette, I have made five other ones for a total of six. So if you want to go check those out, go for it. And I plan to make many more.